to say, I am the best boss. They go, God, we've never worked in a place like this before. You're hilarious. Use weather, sports, and of course, all the local info you need to start your day. I think that pretty much sums it up. Catch Talk of the Town live on 103.7 WTIB. What? Cable 7 in Greenville and worldwide at WTIBFM.com. What? Now here's the host for Talk of the Town. Yes. Henry Hinton. Okay, welcome in. Five minutes after uh, 8 o'clock, it is Talk of the Town here on Wednesday morning, December the 5th. (coughs) Pardon me. Good to have you. McGee is out this morning. Billy Weaver is in. Uh, Billy Weaver from WITN here. Live in the studio. Been a busy week for all the sports guys with all the activity at ECU. Good morning, Weave. How Good are morning. You? I'm glad it all happened at one time instead of spaced out over a week or two and get everything <laughs> out of the way, have a lot of excitement, and then we can uh, you know, get back to a normal sports kind of business. We got some high school football coming up this weekend. Yeah, we got uh, we got the Edenton Tarboro game here on one oh three seven on uh, on on Friday night. I'll be at that game. And we got the Havelock game on ninety four one. Who do they play? Who have a lot? Have a lot. Jacksonville. Ha- Ooh. Yeah. Wow. Jacksonville has lost one game this year, and guess who it was to? Jacksonville. No, Jacksonville lost one game. Oh, Jacksonville year. lost a game to Havelock. Yes. Right. Havelock on uh, That Edenton Tarboro game is going to be a good one. Yeah, it is. Tarboro is tough. So is Edenton. Yeah. Edenton's got a good running back, good running game. Tarboro and, and does the, as well. The, we- the weather's looking a little iffy. No, not for Friday. Well, Saturday and sa- Sunday. Is Saturday be, it is, yeah. yeah Saturday, Saturday. And, Saturday a little see. iffy, and then Sunday looks, I think you said, 80% chance of rain. Let's see. Yeah, Friday looks good. Friday mm-hmm. night, temperature is in the 30s. Yeah, very but the chilly. rain moves in on Saturday and Sunday. I can deal with the chilly as long as it's not chilly and rain. I'm looking at the um, I'm looking at the radar, and uh, it looks to me like Murfreesboro and Roanoke Rapids right now are getting some snow. Mm. Look at that. Check it out. Oh, yeah. Are you folks up on a Husky, you may be getting ready to get some. So you can always um, you can always tell when people are starting to get old. When what? you point your phone to me and I do like this. <laughs> Back up like 10 feet. Well, Whoa, it's, it's, hold on. It's, it's Can't pro- see that close. It's probably a good idea because have you seen the, uh, have you seen the study that's out regarding uh, the cell phone? Turn this up, uh, Joel. Uh, James Corden last night from uh, late night television talking about that. And we'll have that for you in a moment. <laughs> All these electronic <laughs> devices, my phone not working, <laughs> your computer not working. I anyway, think it's operator error. Anyway, there's a study. <laughs> you out, and I are having issues today. There's, there's a study out that shows that uh, your cell phone, that your toilet is actually uh, cleaner and has less germs on it than your cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I don't, you know, if that's true, Ugh. your cell phone's got to be pretty gross, right? So, so Think about it. How many times do you, I'm, like, I wipe off my screen from time to time because it gets, yeah, you know, I do too. nasty and all but, the but fingerprints. But do you ever really but do you re- No, no. And it's yeah. probably a good idea if you do. So we need to get Engelbrecht on the phone yeah. because he what did he say, a 2% chance of uh, snow? Uh, for the folks up in uh, Ahoski, you're getting ready to get it. Uh, it's going to move over toward Edenton. This is not good either. My mom's supposed to be driving over here today, but um, she's got a doctor's appointment. Edenton is right on the edge of it. It may You may just see rain, a few raindrops in Edenton, but there is a little bit of a, um, a snow patch that stretches right now from about Murfreesboro up into Virginia, up to about Waynesboro, Virginia. And it's moving due east. So I think it's going to probably uh, end up getting a Husky, and a Edenton, and Elizabeth City before it's over, if it doesn't die out before it gets closer to the coast. So we'll see. Okay, uh, today's Wednesday. Wasn't it just 70 degrees on Sunday? Uh, and that's why we're all sick. That's why I'm sniffling and can't stop. Mm. Speaking of Roanoke Rapids, coming up on Saturday night at the Roanoke Rapids Theater, Parmalee. Live uh, in concert at the Roanoke Rapids Theater. This is their second big concert. They had a sold-out event a couple of weeks ago with Charlie Daniels, now Parmalee coming to town. And um, uh, our buddy um, Matt from uh, Matt Thomas from uh, Parmalee is going to phone in here in just a couple of minutes, so we can't waste a lot of time. Also coming up this hour, 
the CEO of Vitant Health, Mike Waldrum, is going to be live in the studio around 8.30 this morning. Um, he is very upset with the state treasurer. I was just looking at this story. The state treasurer has ac accused hospitals of some, um, some nefarious activity. He's saying that the hospitals have been non-transparent in dealing with their pricing and recovery charges. And um, uh, the, uh, the CEO of Vitan Health, Mr. Uh, Dr. Waldrum, uh, did a video earlier this week that uh, called the, uh, the, the state treasurer out and basically said he doesn't know what he's talking about when it comes to Vitan Health and what will, and, and his new plan on the state health plan would cost Vitan about $40 million and some of Vitan's facilities would p potentially have to be closed as a result of this. So a little war of words between Mike Waldrum and Dale Falwell have broken out. We're going to hear uh, Dr. Waldrum's side of that coming up here in just a couple of minutes. Well, I, I need to show you this real quick. Can you can you see that video right there? That's Boone. Yes, that's yeah. snow coming down big yeah. time. Ariel Placencia, of yeah, course, Ariel, one of who our, used to be here with us. Yeah, yeah. one of our former WIC yeah. and employees. She's at WCNC now. That's um, in Charlotte. Yeah, so. and that's that's video. It, it she has posted. It's a winter wonderland in Boone. Somebody up around Murfreesboro, call us and tell us what you're seeing. 252-561-8255 because uh, the radar shows a fairly significant snowfall up there right now uh, around Murfreesboro moving east toward uh, toward Ahoski. Let's get a break and we'll come back and we'll uh, – because uh, Matt's going to call here in just a couple of minutes and we want to stay on schedule. But if you're up in that area and you've seen any snow, call us. 252-561-8255, 561-8255. Stay with us Wednesday morning talk of the town. We got a big hour coming up. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Don't wait. Get year end savings now at Greenville Toyota. Corollas, $159 a month. RAV4s, 199 The wait is over and the deals won't last. It's the year end savings event at Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. All right, everybody, this is our team. This is our house. Now let's go out there and have some fun. Ready? Right. Hi, I'm Luke Keekley, and just like my team, Pepsi was born right here in the Carolinas. This is our home field, and Pepsi is dedicated to making a positive impact in the communities all across our two great states. So here's to our house, the Carolinas. U.S. Cellular put towers where most others don't. So people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here. Or catch the game live way over here. Isn't that what you pay for? A stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. Visit Real Wireless, your local U.S. Cellular authorized agent in Ohoski, Williamson, and Windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere. When you're not feeling well, Vident Health can connect you to the care you need anytime, anywhere, from any device. Connect to a new way to get well. Connect to Vident Now. With Vident Now Virtual Care, you can visit a board-certified doctor online 24-7. It's private, secure, and affordable. See a doctor now at VidentNow.com. You waited for year-end savings. Now it's finally here at Greenville Toyota. Camrys, only $179 a month. You don't want to miss these deals. Camrys, $179 during the year-end savings event at Greenville Toyota. 
Question, what will you find on all over-the-counter or OTC medicine packages to help you choose the right drug and use it safely? The answer, the drug facts label. This label lists the medicine's active ingredients and purpose, how much to take, and warnings you should know before using it. Remember, even OTC medicines you buy without a prescription can cause side effects you don't want. So follow the information listed on the drug facts label. For more information, visit FDA.gov slash drug facts label. A message from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Sometimes coming home can be a battle in itself. Our wounded warriors need everyone's support to meet the challenges they face every day. The USO provides every American a way to support them and their families. What? It's good to be back. Join us. Visit USO.org to learn how you can make a difference in the lives of our wounded warriors. The USO. Until everyone comes home. Don't wait. Sixteen after uh, eight o'clock. Welcome back to Talk of the Town again. Dr. Mike Waldrum from uh, Vitamin Health is uh, going to be in the studio live with us in a few minutes. We're scheduled to have Matt Thomas from Parmalee, but he hasn't phoned in yet. I don't think I got Matt's number. If somebody's got Matt's number, text him and tell him we're waiting for him. <laughs> now you got to remember, <laughs> musicians and mornings do not mix. Yeah. Exactly. Just kind of uh, kind of like but, sports guys in mornings <laughs> don't mix. Well, we'll do some so. news headlines. Oh, wait a minute. We may have Matt phoning in at this very moment. Is that a thumbs up? Uh, what do we got, guys? Somebody talk to me. Come on. I'm on live radio here. Okay, we got Matt. <laughs> Everybody's looking at each other and they're not looking at me. Do we got him? Do we got him? No, no, yeah, no, no. Maybe. Se what? Do, do, 17 okay, minutes on. after 8 o'clock. Uh, Matt Thomas will be uh, in Parmalee. He's the lead singer for Parmalee. And he will. Be, uh, the uh, guys will be performing at Rono Rapids Theater. It's the second big concert up there. They had Charlie Daniels Band to uh, open uh, their re-grand opening of the Rono Rapids Theater a couple of, uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, actually, a couple of weeks ago, about a month ago. Uh, my buddy Taco Tom McLean has bought the Roanoke Rapids Theater, and he's breathing new life into that thing. He's got a lot of big acts coming up, including Parmalee on Saturday night. Matt Thomas, good morning. How are you, Matt? Good. How you doing, man? Hey, how you doing? Hey, uh, you, guys, you guys just played Greenville for Freeboot Friday and had about 8,000 people, we heard. So you and I had, a, I had a chance to visit with you a little bit. Hadn't seen you in a long time. But uh, this is good stuff. You get to play the Roanoke Rapids Theater this weekend back in eastern North Carolina. Your roots, baby. I love it, man. I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to hear uh, you know re, re grand opening the place, and uh, you know it's always good to come back home. It's probably the last couple couple shows of the year to wind things down, so it's good to close the year out back home. You know, uh, are you are you living in Nashville now? I know you guys lived in Greenville for a long time, but you you you've all moved to Nashville, haven't you? Yeah, we've been here. Uh, we've been here about seven years now. Yeah. And you did you you guys did a uh, a, a hurricane song. Which was really well done. Uh, what was the name of that? Yeah, it's called Downtown. Downtown, uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we wanted to help out as best we could, you know, from uh, from from out here. We couldn't be there, you know. So we went in one one morning and, and uh, I was telling the writers, I was like, let's write a song for the uh, hurricane victims. See if we can't just try to do something to help. So it's been it's been cool. It's been a cool experience, and people have been well, you know, uh, it's been well received, and it was just good to be able to go back home and. Kind of go visit these places that got hit pretty hard, and, and hopefully help out a little bit. Uh, Parmalee will be on stage at the Rono Graphics Theater coming up on Saturday night. Uh, Eight o'clock is the uh, is the showtime in Rono Graphics, and you can get tickets at rrtlive.com. And I'm sure you'll be performing uh, all your your big songs include uh, Feels Like Carolina, which was your big number one. What's it like to be from Parmalee, North Carolina, have a number one country hit? 
Uh, it's hard to explain. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like when you guys uh, went the number one on the country charts? That was pretty cool, wasn't it? It's was pretty cool. I mean, you know, who, who would have thought that, you know, uh, you know, four dudes from around there played music out in a little barn could, could make a song go number one <laughs> on the charts. I think it's pretty, pretty crazy, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Hey Matt, yeah. this Matt, this is Billy Weaver. I I do have a question for you, and kind of piggybacking yeah. on on what uh, Henry was saying in a small little town from Parmalee. Obviously, when you make it big and you do so many interviews, everybody wants to know. Okay, what is Parmalee? What does that mean? And when you tell them, uh, what do they usually say? And how much attention has e- the you know such a small town in eastern North Carolina gotten over the last few years? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. I mean, yeah, it, it, that we get asked that quite a, quite a bit, you know, for, for new listeners and stuff. Uh, and then you know, they're like, "Oh, okay, okay," you know. And then some people say, "Well, I, I looked it up. I couldn't find it because it's spelled like, different." Spelled it. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, you probably you probably have a hard time finding it because it's so small. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it's brought a lot of attention to the town. I think the coolest thing was when we first. Uh, we were filming our uh, introductory uh, video for for the band back. We just got signed, and we brought the bus into Parmalee and uh, did some photos out by the old gas station, and and, uh, and got to see the Miss um, Richardson, who was running the gas station up there for many years, and would sell us beer. And, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, of age, you were of age we when they sold you beer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Yeah, you it's guys, you cool guys, stuff, you guys kind of, you, you didn't start as a country band. You guys kind of started as a little bit of a, had a little, little bit of a rock feel to the band when you first started when you were playing clubs around Greenville, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, we we come from that that background. You know, my dad he played, he so it's like blues and soul in Eastern North Carolina. You know, growing up was all that, and we grew up in playing the classic rock stuff with him, and, and um, you know, grew up listening to bands and stuff. So it was always a, a four piece you know, rock and roll band. And I think coming from the country, you know, it's just the way you talk and, and the things you experience, it all kind of worked its way out and, and within writing songs. And, you know, we stumbled around for a long time trying to write, trying to, you know, we didn't really have a, a, a direction, you know, somebody to say, hey, do this, do this. And, and then we did finally, and somebody was sending this one way and sending us the other way. I think until we wrote Carolina, then we realized, okay, this is, this is what we're, you know, what we should be doing. You wrote. And we wrote Carolina in 2007. So, did um, you really? That, yeah, we but had that out. You know, um, when when it, but it we, went, but when it it, it 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 became a hit. When it was after that, wasn't 2013, it? 2013. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 uh, pretty much the end of, t- pretty much would have been 2014 when it actually yeah. uh, hit the top of the chart. So I'm gonna I'm gonna play that song here in just a second, uh, and I'm sure it'll be the hit of your show. On that's still the song everybody wants to hear you all play when you play oh, yeah. Roanoke Rapids on Saturday night. What what is the song about though? It it it, it kind of feels like um, you you guys when you were you you travel all over the country now and you play concerts all over the country. But uh, is it is it about thinking about being back here in Eastern North Carolina? Yeah, it is. I mean, it's about we had just gotten back from California. We've been out there for uh, about a, two or three months that that period of time, and we got back home. I remember being in the studio over there. And, Greenwood Boulevard house, just it, it it reminded me of California when I was in the studio. I was like, wow, it kind of feels like I'm back in California. But I walk outside and said, no, I'm home. So we kind of had that reference of you know, feels like Carolina, looks like California, and uh, and and but also parlayed into everybody being gone from 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 everybody. Josh had just gotten married, and we were you know he's gone from his wife to Nell all the time, and it seemed like we were missing all the birthdays and stuff. So that home kind of thing tied in and we just kind of parlayed that thought into the to the song and uh yeah yeah it's been it's, it's been crazy the amount of people you know all over the country and other places that you know talk you know tell us that, that song is special to them and how it really the cool thing is a lot of military people say you know my, my husband he's you know stationed in north carolina and i'm from california and this is our song he goes got deployed and things like that you hear the stories a lot it's really cool uh, you guys uh, recorded downtown the uh, song you did about her, uh, the hurricane victims and about the hur- hurricane Florence. Uh, anything else new? Have you been in the studio? Any, uh, got a new album or anything coming out? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, we are currently. I'll be in the studio next week as soon as we get back. Um, I'm actually writing 
I'm going downtown, and today's really cool. I'm, I'm actually going in with some of the guys from Hootie and Blowfish to write. They're going to have a new album out, so hopefully I can. Nice. Uh, maybe writing on, uh, have one of their songs come out soon. I hope we'll see how the day goes. <laughs> I saw <laughs> I saw Darius time. Rucker We're, is actually going to go back and tour with Hootie and the Blowfish. Yeah, yeah. How about that? Uh, that from what I, from what I hear, so is there is there cool a possibility there could be a Parmalee Hootie and the Blowfish kind of combo tour going in, on? In fact, you know, I heard a rumor that you guys were working on maybe a Hurricane concert. Is that true? Uh, we we were t- we've been talking to uh, to some people about that, so hopefully that'll come come together as well. So there's all kind of things. I'm I'm really excited about uh, this new music we're about to go record. And, um, I've been writing extensively throughout the throughout the year, and, and it's, it's time for something new. So we're we're going in, like I said, next week. But uh, we'll keep everybody posted on everything. We're going in also to shoot our uh, Parmalism season four today. As a matter of fact, this afternoon we're going to start shooting those episodes so if you haven't seen those you have to go to our parmalism uh, instagram page and and check out the country dictionary <laughs> <laughs> parmalism i like that yeah y'all everybody i mean it's, it's, it's probably not a big deal to people back home because they know about everything we're talking about but some of the other people, they <laughs> it's, it's sort of like those you might be a redneck if it, kind of. Yeah, absolutely. It's almost <laughs> like you might be from eastern North Carolina. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you might be from a little town in eastern North Carolina called Parmalee if. <laughs> well, Matt, yeah, uh, that's right. Matt, we're proud of you guys and uh, are excited about you uh, playing back here in uh, eastern North Carolina Saturday night. Again, Parmalee will be on stage at the Roanoke Rapids Theater coming up on uh, on on Saturday night. Boy, Tom and the guys are doing a great job of bringing in some big acts uh, and uh, and Parmalee is uh, is the second big act in a month to come to the Roanoke Rapids Theater. Tickets again on sale right now. You can get them online at the website rrtlive.com. Rrtlive.com. Matt Thomas from Parmalee. Uh, Matt, great to hear from you, man. Thanks for calling in, and we'll talk to you soon. Uh, thank you, guys. Great talking with you. We'll see y'all. All right, very good. That's Matt Thomas. Twenty six after, make it twenty seven after. And, of course, uh, proud of these guys from being from Eastern North Carolina. Here's their number one hit, Carolina. Home is where my heart is still beating. And I don't know when I'll see her again. I hate to see her cry when I'm leaving. But now I'm a thousand miles away again. And she feels like Carolina. with low monthly payments on new Jeep here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. It's the Black Friday sales event. Lease a new 2019 Jeep Cherokee for only $299 a month with only $299 do-it signing. Lease a new Jeep Grand Cherokee for only $399 a month with only $399 do-it signing. Or lease a new Jeep Wrangler for only $399 a month with only $399 do-it signing. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Carolina's greatest hits play all day on 1079 WNCT. Don't stop believing. Oh, all your favorites. With Mark, Mark, and Laura in the morning. Carolina's greatest hits play here. WNCT. This is the Pepsi for serious fans mm. and serious eats. Oh, yeah, like Carolina pulled pork, carnitas, or Alberto's al pastor. Nice, Beto. This is the Pepsi for Sundays at the ballpark and days off at your favorite joint. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. Stop by Moore's Old Time Barbecue and grab a Carolina Classic combo with a free 20-ounce Pepsi. Moore's Barbecue and Pepsi, Carolina Classics indeed. How I define making 
In the broadest possible terms, it is making something extant in the world that didn't exist. Everybody who's ever made anything is bringing something into fruition for a reason. And that act in and of itself makes us stewards of our culture. It's something that we're talking about. It's a response. Actually, it's telling a story. That's really what it is. And I include everything that could be made, painting, sculpture, welding, all of that. Yellow is positive. When a kid gets their hands on the world and learns that they can make their fantasy play, that they can make their reality, that's power. And as far as I'm concerned, everyone should feel that kind of power. There we go. If there's something that interests you to bring into the world, that's fantastic. Go figure out how to do it. Go tell your own story. There it is. And so I want to know why you make. Let's go. Share your own Why I Make story today. Visit whyimake.org. Come check out the all-new 2019 Ram. We have a huge selection to choose from here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Hurry in to the Black Friday sales event for huge rebates and super low lease payments on Ram trucks. Right now, get a total savings of $12,659 or lease a new 2019 Ram 1500 Crew Cab for only $379 a month with only $999 due at signing. Yes, yes, yes. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Keeping you ahead of the story, this is your Eastern Carolina News Update. Good morning, everyone. It is currently 831. Temperatures dropping a bit. It's 39 degrees in Greenville. I'm Billy Weaver, and this is a look at your WITN news headlines. Washington is bidding a final farewell to former President George H.W. Bush. The public is invited to a viewing at the U.S. Capitol building in Washington, D.C. today, where the president will lie in state. Many of the nation's federal and state offices will be closed in observance, including all post offices, the NASDAQ, and the New York Stock Exchange. And all Texas state offices also will be closed. Yesterday's visitation services drew visits from several notable Republicans, including former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice, former White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer, and U.S. Secretary of Housing and Urban Development Ben Carson. A former ECU football player walked into a Greensboro High School Monday armed heavily and had loaded guns, according to police. Steve Spence had written directions of intentions to kill a total of five people, according to police documents. Police say he showed a gun inside Smith High School cafeteria for an employee or an employee immediately radioed for a lockdown. A school resource officer caught Spence as he tried to get away. Police believe Spence had showed up to the school looking for an employee that he had a personal relationship with. Spence went before a judge for his first appearance yesterday and rambled about hearing voices. The judge ordered a mental evaluation for Spence and put him on a $2 million bond. He is facing multiple charges, including two counts of attempted murder, weapons on school camp campus, resisting arrest, and going armed to the terror of the public. A UNC Chapel Hill graduate student and is at the forefront of protest over the Confederate statue on campus has been arrested once again. Authorities say 26-year-old Maya Little is being charged with inciting a riot and assaulting, assaulting a police officer during a rally Monday night. UNC police said Little turned herself in on Tuesday at the Orange County Courthouse. In April, Little defaced the monument with her own blood and red ink. She was found guilty of a misdemeanor but was not punished. Monday's rally followed word that UNC proposed to build a new $5.3 million history and education center to house the statue of Silent Sam, which was toppled by pro protesters back in August. And a Marine stationed here in the East is facing kidnapping and sex offense charges. 23-year-old Alec Yurton was arrested and charged with forcible sex offense, kidnapping, and discharging of a firearm. The Jacksonville Daily News reports he is accused of firing a shotgun in the front yard of a home in Jacksonville and forcing a woman from Wilmington to engage in sexual activities. Online records show that he posted a $100,000 bail. He's back in court on December 18th. It is currently 8.34, 39 degrees in Greenville. I'm Billy Weaver, and that's a look at your WITN News Headlines. Okay, here is what we have, folks. Believe it or not, there is some snow falling in the northern areas of our listening area. Right now around Murfreesboro, 
The Husky's getting ready to get it. Temperatures here in Green, and it's going to stay north. I don't think it'll get down as uh, far south even as Williamston. It looks like it's kind of moving across. Might get Edenton, might get Elizabeth City. Partly cloudy, high temperatures are going to be around um, 45 degrees today is about all we can hope for. We're going to be in the 20s tonight. And um, then coming up on Thursday, sunshine, high temperatures only around 48 degrees. On Friday, sunshine, 52 for a high. Overnight lows in the 30s. And then looking ahead to the weekend, 30% chance of showers on Saturday with temperatures in the mid-40s. And Sunday, we've got an 80% chance of rain or something. And uh, temperatures in the upper 40s. Probably a little bit too ch- uh, too warm to, uh, to have precipitation. That's... Uh, that's what it looks like. News and weather, a service this morning of Tire Realty. Uh, the guys at Tire Realty are giving away another Mike's Farm Christmas uh, gift, uh, and they're going to give it away tomorrow. Here's what you got to do. It's a dinner for eight on Sunday night at Mike's Farm. We mentioned this yesterday. Um, they've had so many people. Uh, uh, they gave away one, as you remember, at the grand opening. We were there live a couple of weeks ago. But uh, Tire Realty Group, you go to their Facebook page and you enter by Facebook and you can win dinner for eight this Sunday at four o'clock at Mike's Farm. Have you been to Mike's Farm? I hear great things about it. The drawing will be on Facebook on Friday. And of course, uh, we'll talk about that again uh, on Thursday and Friday again. But go to Facebook. You got two more days to register to win dinner for eight from Tire Realty Group on Facebook. Go to uh, Tire Realty Group on Facebook. 836, let's get a break in. When we return, Mike Waldrum, the Chief Executive Officer of Vitamin Health, is going to be here with us. A little controversy uh, surfacing between uh, he and uh, he's he's had some uh, harsh words for the uh, State Treasurer when the State Treasurer has accused hospitals of being less than transparent about their pricing and he wants to change some of the uh, pricing for the State Health Plan. And uh, Dr. Waldrum has been pretty direct in his response on that. You'll hear it from the horse's mouth right after this. Thanks to Billy Weaver for being here. Weaver, have a great day. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you being here for McGee this morning. All right. All right, Dr. Mike Waldrum from Biden up next. Be right back. Save with low monthly payments on new Jeep here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. It's the Black Friday sales event. Lease a new 2019 Jeep Cherokee for only $299 a month with only $299 do-it signing. Lease a new Jeep Grand Cherokee for only $399 a month with only $399 do-it signing. Or lease a new Jeep Wrangler for only $399 a month with only $399 do-it signing. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Carolina's greatest hits play all day on 1079 WNCT. Don't stop believing. Oh, all your favorites. With Mark, Mark, and Laura in the morning. Carolina's greatest hits play here. WNCT. This is the Pepsi for serious fans Mm. and serious eats. Oh, yeah, like Carolina pulled pork, carnitas, or Alberto's al pastor. Nice, Beto. This is the Pepsi for Sundays at the ballpark and days off at your favorite joint. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. Stop by Moore's Old Time Barbecue and grab a Carolina Classic combo with a free 20-ounce Pepsi. Moore's Barbecue and Pepsi, Carolina Classics indeed. How I define making, in the broadest possible terms, it is making something extant in the world that didn't exist. Everybody who's ever made anything is bringing something into fruition for a reason. And that act in and of itself makes us stewards of our culture. It's something that we're talking about. It's a response. Actually, it's telling a story. That's really what it is. And I include everything that could be made. Painting, sculpture, welding, all of that. Yellow is positive. When a kid gets their hands on the world and learns that they can make their fantasy play, that they can make their reality, that's power. And as far as I'm concerned, everyone should feel that kind of power. There we go. If there's something that interests you to bring into the world, that's fantastic. Go figure out how to do it. Go tell your own story. There it is. And so I want to know why you make. Let's go. Share your own Why I Make story today. Visit whyimake.org. 
Come check out the all-new 2019 Ram. We have a huge selection to choose from here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Hurry in to the Black Friday sales event for huge rebates and super low lease payments on Ram trucks. Right now, get a total savings of $12,659 or lease a new 2019 Ram 1500 Crew Cab for only $379 a month with only $999 due at signing. Oh, Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Twenty minutes in front of nine o'clock. Welcome back. It's Talk of the Town here on uh, Wednesday morning, December fifth, and uh, very happy to welcome uh, my friend Dr. Mike Waldrum, the uh, Chief Executive Officer for Vitamin Health into the studio we got a lot to talk about there's a little controversy swirling out there between uh, uh, the, well, some of the comments made by the uh, state treasurer and a response by Dr. Walter but first how are you it's good to see you I don't we haven't had you in here in a while and of course you you know we all know that you uh, took a little tumble a while back how you feeling <laughs> well I uh, really appreciate being here I feel great um, yeah. I have had uh, a significant injury and um, as a physician, healthcare administrator. I can tell you secret shopping in the ICU uh, <laughs> is not for the faint of heart, but we had a great team, the trauma surgeons, the e e emergency room staff, the nurses, all the technicians. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't because I was the CEO. It was just genuine, great caring. And I can't thank uh, the team enough for that. And I'm uh, really, really You've made well. a miraculous recovery. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you feeling good? Feel great. Good, good. Stay off those Thanks. kids' toys, will you? <laughs> well, <laughs> try to stay young. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, let's talk about things going on. Yeah. Uh, Vidit uh, Health, I, I say this over and over again, is, is, is probably the most important part of the economic engine in eastern North Carolina. And it, just, it seems like you're constantly under attack. <laughs> And uh, comments recently by the state treasurer. The state treasurer wants to change uh, reimbursements in the state health plan, which is the, the plan that uh, basically uh, uh, handles the health insurance for state employees. Correct. And, and he wants to change some of those. But, you know, as has been uh, Dale Falwell's style since he's been treasurer, he's been pretty direct about it. And uh, he's actually accused uh, North Carolina hospitals of not being transparent in pricing and um, in the way that they charge people. There has been uh, an antitrust lawsuit filed by the um, U.S. and North Carolina Justice Departments against Atrium Health, which uh, basically owns the Carolina's health care system. Uh, and uh, he says that it exposed practices for consumers, shielding them from high quality, cost effective coverage. Now, I know you've had a, a lot to say about that. You released a video recently challenging some of those comments and talking about uh, you know what this new uh, system would do to the uh, to the violent uh, uh, economy and, and so I, I just want you to have an opportunity to respond to that great well I appreciate the opportunity um, so first I think what you said initially is exactly uh, correct you know I've had the distinct honor and frankly love being in Eastern North Carolina for over three and a half years now, and it's just been a great three and a half years. And as I drive around Eastern North Carolina, meeting with our community leaders and meeting with our team members and physicians, you know, we have a great environment and it's a beautiful place, um, but it's no, you, you know, it's, it's no secret that this is an underserved area and it's a difficult environment and is probably one of the most difficult environments for healthcare um, because it's been left behind and not considered for many, many years. And so um, the great thing is, is Viden Health has a, an incredible tradition. We have the data to show it that, um, you know, starting 30, 40, 30 or 40 years ago, I always say I get to stand on the, the shoulders of my predecessors, but we built a system of care that isn't shown that it's taking care of the population and improving health outcomes at a more rapid rate than the rest of the state and the, and the country, um, especially in regions like ours. And, you know, talk to the Shep Center, talk to whoever you want, and it's pretty understood that rural America 
in general, but rural health care specifically is under attack. So I'm so proud of the work we do at Viden Health and really to our providers, the doctors in the community, the Vidant Medical Group doctors, uh, the thousands of nurses and technicians and EVS and people and lab people, radiology people that have to come to work 24-7, 365 to take care of a population that's overburdened with disease. And so I'm really proud of that work. I think we have a great tradition. We are, have been and continue to transform the way we do our work to make sure we drive value. And we have a demonstrated track record of that. So, I, you know, I just can't overstate the importance of that, especially in a region like that, because it doesn't seem to be understood by people on the other side of I-95. I'll just tell you that. Um, you know, so I think that we have that. But, you know, more importantly, I think when you, you mentioned it, you know, we are an economic engine. But you may know this, and I think you do know that we are known in our communities at helping not just providing health care, but driving economic development. So um, I'm very active, as so a lot of our leaders are, on promoting um, new companies to the east. And, and I have, frankly, my whole afternoon is with uh, two economic development groups to try to continue to um, help the east in economic development, because we think that's really important. And having good health care is part of economic development. And so I think that, you know, we are very concentrated on that. And we're, we educate. So we educate people um, and help the community colleges and all of those things. And I'm really proud of our team because just this year um, we've been recognized uh, by a, a couple of our communities for citizen or employer of the year kind of things. And um, um, in Bellhaven, we've been recently recognized by that community for um, our support of that community. Um, uh, and and that's, quite, that's quite a turnaround after all the controversy in Bellhaven a few years back. Yeah, well, they, it's an example of this lack of understanding. So we're transforming health care, and we get sometimes attacked for doing it, but we're doing what we think is right for our communities at what the, our communities can afford. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that I think, that, frankly, the treasurer hasn't been willing to listen to. So, you know, I'm really proud of that work because in Bellhaven, in Little Washington, and in the Outer Banks, um, we are um, being recognized by the community for doing that work. And I can tell you, as I go from the Outer Banks all the way down south to Duplin and across our 29 counties, that's what I see, that's what I hear. And so I feel like these discussions are about attacking the integrity of that. And so I think that's important. And so, I, you know, you've kind of, I've heard some of your intro and stuff, and I want to make it very clear that, um, I'm coming out now, and I've been pretty quiet. Um, I spent the, the, the day yesterday with our legislators and telling them this. Um, but the, our treasurer has been the one that's had the mouthpiece, and he's been talking pretty loudly and, and frankly, being pretty inflammatory. Uh, and so I've decided that, it, that somebody else has to tell the other story, which is the story that I just told you, and that when someone that is um, using a hatchet to solve problems it's going to affect Eastern North Carolina. And what he doesn't seem to understand is these changes uh, in this pricing scheme that he's come up with um, is uh, going to disproportionately affect rural North Carolina. So I think um, this, to me, this is about um, disparities in care, taking care of underserved population. And frankly, everybody that's in the conversation that's decided to attack me because I've decided to voice the other story um, don't have the obligation that we have at Viden Health, which is to take care of everyone that shows up to our door. And I told the treasurer that, um, and they don't seem to be concerned. And so whether you talk about uh, any of the major play, uh, payers, um, the state health plan folks, any of them, that they don't have to worry about what our doctors and my team have to worry about every day, which is taking care of all of the people of Eastern North Carolina. We take that, that challenge very seriously. And I do want to point out that in order to stay in business, we have a regulation that says we have to do that. And so I don't think that our legislators, our, our elected officials should abrogate the responsibility that the healthcare businesses have to take into consideration to be in business. Some of the uh, comments by the state treasurer, uh, and again, the average person, myself included, and health care is so complicated, there's no way for any of us to understand it. <clears throat> but it seems like some of Dale Falwell's comments 
targeted at hospitals, and this is not the first time he's done it. Basically, uh, what we are hearing from him is that hospitals are overcharging us, that, that hospitals are not uh, giving us a fair deal and, and those kind of things. And, uh, and, and then I heard your video where you said that if the state health plan went through, it would cost Vidant Health $40 million a year. And I'm wondering, man, somewhere in between there, we got to figure out uh, what this is and, and, and how we can make this work. We can't have this happen to Vidant Health. Yeah, well, I, so you'd have to ask the treasurer to defend his inflammatory comments that he's put on uh, the um, website. He has made an allegation that all hospitals in the state of North Carolina are, are breaking federal law with lack of price transparency. Um, and I think that's a highly inflammatory allegation to make uh, when we spend millions of dollars a year to make sure that we provide services with integrity and that we don't have fraud, waste, or uh, ab abuse. Have you and, and the treasurer been in the room together and discuss this, or oh, has, yeah. has this been more of a media <laughs> war of words oh, no, so no, no. far? <laughs> well, so, we, we met uh, <laughs> September 5th. Um, it was primarily about Unify, but he let me know where he was mm -hmm. going, and we had a very robust conversation. We believe that healthcare has to transform, and that, um, and I'll tell him what I will tell you. Uh, I told him what I told you in that meeting, that, um, it, you know, we live in eastern North Carolina, right? There's, uh, um, if, there's no room at the, at the, on the top of the price curve, right? Have you been in eastern North Carolina? It's a beautiful, great place, but it's not flush with money. We're not in downtown Charlotte or Raleigh, right? I, and so I, always, I always believe that eastern North Carolina uh, gets the short end of the stick because the economy from Raleigh to Charlotte is so good. I mean, it's it's the best economy in the country. If you take what I call that success crescent, where you go from Raleigh to Greensboro down to Charlotte, I mean, there's just not a more dynamic, economically viable area in the entire country. So everybody goes, wow, look at North Carolina. Yeah. North Carolina's booming. But the truth of the matter is when you come east of I-95, you have abject poverty everywhere you look. And so right. as a result of that, some of these policies that become statewide policies, and this seems to be a great example of it, we, we get the short end of the stick. Well, I, you, you said it, and I totally agree. Yeah. You know, you said it's complex. So I'm a physician, and I understand what it takes to take care of people. Um, I also have a business degree from one of the best universities and an epidemiology degree from one of the best universities in the country, and it sometimes is confusing to me, and I've, been, and I've spent 30 years in it. But... Um, I specialize in how do you take care of, of, of communities like we are in, and I'm in eastern North Carolina for that purpose. And so it's that, I've been saying it for forever that people in shiny buildings in big cities that make you know these broad brush kind of policy changes and they haven't lived or seen a Hosky or Duplin and don't understand how it plays out in environments like we live in, are, it, it, there's unintended consequences. And yes, I told the treasurer that um, the treasurer has his views. I don't know if you've ever talked to him. He tends to. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah finish your sentence. I'm sorry. He tends to. Well, what, what, <laughs> what, what do you think? Uh, you know, so he, he inputs. He's a politician. Inputs, yeah. yeah. Well, inputs. He's not. He's not all that interested in the inputs. And so right now, after yesterday, after my videos, yeah. you know, they're all attacking me. You know, yeah. the the usual players. Um, and frankly. Um, you know, I don't know how much time we have, but I mean, I'm happy to get into some detail. About six more minutes. Okay. Well, you know, so <laughs> you know, the treasurer, I, I feel like, is, is as an elected official, is is acting inappropriately, and you know, I have an opinion. I'm a citizen. I pay taxes, and I run a, a really important company that takes care of the people of Eastern North Carolina. And, you know, he's been up there saying, you know, with the UNC thing, with the redacted document thing. That's an example. Do you know about that? No. Well, so he asked UNC for their, the cost of, uh, the, the, their prices and cost of care. And they right? gave it to him with redacted numbers? Redacted numbers. It's all on the Internet. So you could, yeah. you could go look at that. And yeah. so he, he decided he wanted to be a bit snarky. And so he wrote a redacted document back to them and said, oh, dear, see that. Yeah. dear, you know, right, right. And it was all redacted. Well, that's really cute, you know, and interesting. And it plays well in the moment, I guess. But does it really solve complex problems that have been growing for 35 years? Mm -hmm. and, and our big issue is that, right? We need responsible, thoughtful 
methodical transformation, not a hatchet. A hatchet doesn't help. Yeah. And so we asked, you know, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. So we asked the, the treasurer's office, how do they want to control costs to the state health plan? So this is North Carolina state health plan, uh, um, current costs, and how they're preserving benefits. And we get a, a document like this. For the radio audience, the entire page is redacted. It's been blacked out. Yeah. And so, and then, you know, talk about transparency. You know, I think it's interesting. I think it would be interesting to know. So of these cuts mm -hmm. for to the hospitals and providers that take care of all the citizens, not just the state health plan citizens, um, how much of those cuts get, get passed to the states where retirees have moved to? And so it's not a proportion of cuts because he can't do that to the other mm -hmm. states. So when you want to know how many people have moved out of the state of North Carolina and carry their benefits to Florida, South Carolina, Tennessee, Virginia, and that they won't He be, won't tell you that either. Well, you see the map, you see the, the yeah. number of participants and the rates and the agreements. And so and there, all of that's been redacted, by the way. And I, then, I, and then, you know, and then, so how much does the state health plan pay mm -hmm. to Blue Cross? We are going to run out of time. This has been, this has been uh, interesting. Um, what's the upshot of this? Where do we, uh, yeah. The fees, an, an the fees to Blue Cross that they've had a relationship with for over 30 years. Yeah. Let me ask you is this. totally redacted. How, how do you want this to be resolved? I, th I believe, and what I told our legislators yesterday, is that this problem, this issue, has grown up over 30 to 35 years, and that draconian, arbitrary cuts that play out more significantly in rural, Amer in rural America and rural North Carolina, that there is no urgency to use a hatchet as, as Dr. Murphy said, when a scalpel will do, mm. and that we need to slow this down and get um, appropriate oversight and a plan that makes sure that it doesn't devastate the institutions that are so important to their communities. We are we are uh, we are out of time, unfortunately. You uh, said six minutes. So, uh, yeah, you, <laughs> that was six minutes, believe it or not. <laughs> it went by pretty fast, yeah, it didn't does. it? Hey, listen, uh, thank you for being on. Um, thank you for having me. I, I, uh, there are a lot of other things I'd like to talk to you about. We need, we need to reschedule you so you can come back in. Well, um, and, I, and I sense that this might just be the beginning of from, a, You may get a call from people I, say never I, have me again. No, so. I, I think we'll probably get a call today asking for equal time, which we'll, we'll be happy to do if the Treasurer wants to come on. He's always willing to come on, so sure. we'll, we'll work on that as well. But, Dr. Uh, Waldron, thank you for being here. Great to see you sure, doing so well. Great to see you. Thank, thank you. you. And let me say this to you. Thank you for fighting for Eastern North Carolina. Well, it's a great place, and um, it's really important. And if you want to know how you can help, go to vitenhealth.com. Uh, right now, we, we think that the best thing to do is for folks to, to contact their legislators and say these should not go through until we understand the implications to our communities more significantly. And ramming this through right now is, is not the answer. Thank you for being here. Thank we you. are actually done for the day. We'll talk about this more tomorrow. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody. <laughs> Save with low monthly payments on new Jeeps here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. It's the Black Friday sales event. Lease a new 2019 Jeep Cherokee for only $2.99 a month with only $2.99 due at signing. Lease a new Jeep Grand Cherokee for only $3.99 a month with only $3.99 due at signing. Or lease a new Jeep Wrangler for only $3.99 a month with only $3.99 due at signing. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. space you can't run down to the store to buy parts you have to improvise with what you have on your mission making is when there is something new that was not in existence at the beginning of the day okay it's an incredible sense of accomplishment when you have made something that's why i make now i want to hear why you make
Share your own Why I Make story today. Visit whyimake.org. Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is the truck dealer in Eastern North Carolina. We are overloaded with new Ram trucks and we've discounted every one of them to move. Save up to $12,000 in total savings on select Ram 1500 trucks right now at the Summer Clearance Event. And come test drive the all-new 2019 Rams that are now here in stock. Visit us at WashingtonChrysler.com. Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Drive a little to save a lot. U.S. Cellular put towers where most others don't. So people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here. Or catch the game live way over here. Isn't that what you pay for? A stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. Visit Real Wireless, your local U.S. Cellular authorized agent in Ohoski, Williamson, and Windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere. Come check out the all-new 2019 Ram. We have a huge selection to choose from here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Hurry in to the Black Friday sales event for huge rebates and super low lease payments on Ram trucks. Right now, get a total savings of $12,659 or lease a new 2019 Ram 1500 crew cab for only $379 a month with only $999 due at signing. Oh, Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Station. 